Welcome to the historic Wailua Sugar Mill, home of Arakawa Surfboards. Eric Arakawa is hands down one of the most legendary shapers of all time, especially here in the Hawaiian Islands. And today we're gonna to learn a little bit about Eric's shaping process. We're gonna check out some of the most historical boards that he's got under this roof. And we're gonna check out his showroom and a little bit more about Eric's surfboard process. It goes without being said, I mean, sorry to throw the, the legend word around, but uh, you are, are absolutely a legend. That, in the... The legend that's synonymous with old? <laughs> Is that what? <laughs> what about a young legend in the shaping <laughs> world? But yeah, it's hard to, it's honestly hard to think about surfboards in Hawaii and uh, not have your name come up. Right. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about how you got started shaping? Basically, um, I had no intention of building boards for anyone else but me. And so I started when I was 14 years old. And you know, when you're 14, you're actually still too young to, to work legally or to, to get a mm -hmm. job out, you know, out in the marketplace. And um, so what we, what I and my, my brothers did, we were, we just called people in the neighborhood, asked if you know they needed a, their lawns mowed and all that. <laughs> we go around and skirt around the neighborhood and collect beer bottles and all that, take them to the redemption center, and you know working all day, we probably you know scrounge up maybe a, you know three or three three to five bucks, and I mean that take forever, right, to get a surfboard. Back then it was about a hundred bucks for a surfboard, which is inconceivable right now yeah. almost right but uh still back then 14 years old you know working all day and scrounging making, up. on a good day making five bucks that's a good day and you know that's so i just figured well i'm gonna speed things up and maybe i could make my own board so and, and that was it that was my main motivation when did it like officially kind of become something that you're like wow i'm good at this like this could be a career on that first board i actually thought i was really good at it that very first board, um, but it was, as it turned out, it was, even to this day, it was the worst board I've ever ridden in my life. <laughs> I mean, there's not even a close second. A friend of mine asked me to build him a board. I have no idea why, you know, after that first board. Before I knew it, I was building boards. I was getting orders from people I didn't know, and all of a sudden, I just had this epiphany, like, well, maybe I'm in business, so. And so, but one thing like that's synonymous, I think, with, with seeing your label on boards is seeing it in magazines and seeing it on the podium. Obviously, you've been building boards for uh, local Hawaiian surfers and then people that come to Hawaii, whether it's the Triple Crown or whatever it may be. How has that kind of molded your shaping career, working with athletes like Andy to now like a, a Jack? You know what, it's, I, I tell you what, it's because you know, I never regarded myself as a really good surfer. I mean, I could, I, I knew what I liked. I could feel the boards and I could make improvements and changes, modifications based on what I felt. Um, you know, I mean, when you get someone like that, the, like the first, first really high level pro that I built boards for was for Michael Hull. And he was super exacting, super demanding in a positive way. He knew exactly but what he wanted. He knew exactly and... what he wanted. And you know, when I was really young, I was I was in my early 20s, and I thought I knew what I was doing until I started shaping boards for him. And um, he took me through boot camp, basically. That was Shapers training day. boot camp. Yeah, it was. And um, so that it was critical. So like with Michael, you mentioned Andy, Jack, other people. Um, I, Mike Ho was a standard. So. Um, as far as him being someone who was super dedicated, he had the work ethic, he, he communicated, and he could articulate what he felt. Mm -hmm. And do you have any like defining moments in your career, whether that's a board that you made for someone who won a world title, or any highlight moments that just stand out? Uh, I mean, th there were two. One, the first one was, I mean, and I was really young and just, um, building boards for Michael. Mm -hmm. um, I was still in my early, early 20s, and he'd only been riding for me for not man, a year, maybe not even. And um, he uh, he won the Pipe Masters on the board. This is this is that year he had a, 1982, oh, yeah. he, he had a cast mm -hmm. on his arm. You know, that was a first experience for me, seeing someone win on one of my boards, you know, at a major event. And then fast forwarding, uh, what a couple decades later, um, Andy Irons, so winning, winning a world title. Yeah, you know, um, 
coming into Hawaii after Brazil, Kelly was 500 points ahead. And back then, this is Andy's second world title. Um, so back then, with the way the points were structured, 500 points, being 500 points ahead was pretty much yeah. like a done You're deal. You're way, way ahead. Yeah, so pretty far, it'd be hard to make up. But back that year, it, uh, th there was two events that finished off the year was Sunset and Pipe. So Sunset was a CT, Pipe was too. So big points at the back yeah, of the year. And, and, and then, um, yeah, but Andy made it to the final. Kelly lost early. It's like the perfect storm. And it went to Pipe and it was like, it was a Hollywood script. And they both made it to the final. Andy won, took the title. And yeah. The rest is history. Yeah, it, it, yes. I mean, some of the most satisfying moments that that happen like just every day, we, you know, yeah. every, every week, every yeah. month, is a customer comes back and is just super happy with their boards. Because this is what we do, right? Yeah. We don't. We don't build these boards every day so that we can build boards for the pros. Yeah. It's really opposite. So, you know, we, we build boards for these high level surfers so, you know. So we Joe Schmo can get yeah, on Yeah, we can exactly. build boards for, you know, a lot of this, the average Joes or just, you know, our local guys and our friends. And what I'm building is not building things for people to engage in a frivolous activity, but you know, with surfing, you 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 engage and you minister to the holistically to the the, the whole person. Absolutely. And yeah, so I mean, so for me, it's it's like a this it's it's this redeeming quality to something that I've devoted my life to. Samuel Clemens said once, right, Mark Twain. He said he said, find something you love to do, and you'll never work again. A beautiful right. quote. So, yeah. It's a beautiful quote. Words to live by. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I really all appreciate right, it. Thanks yeah. for taking all that time. Yeah. Too. Sure.